In this Lightburn Hints video, we're going to show you how you can crop any image you import into Lightburn. Let's go. Hi, my name is Gil, and in this Lightburn Hints video, we're going to go through how you can crop and edit an image in Lightburn using the built-in tools. By making edits to your images in Lightburn, you can isolate images that you want to use and fine tune them for your laser, making your setup time faster and easier. Cause this is a Lightburn hints video, we're going to jump straight into the hint really quickly. But before we can do that, let me take a moment to invite you to hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming hints and tutorials based around Lightburn. And I would love it if you could come along to the laser live streams that we host on this channel where you can show off your successful projects and meet other fellow laserologists who are exploring what they can do with their lasers. The link to the group is in the description below and I look forward to seeing what you can create with your laser. Trust me, we have some amazing stuff coming up and I know you wouldn't want to miss out. Okay, let's jump into Lightburn so we can explore how you can edit your images in Lightburn. Okay, we're back in Lightburn and today in this Lightburn tip, I'm going to show you guys how to edit out or mask an image live. We did go through this step by step in another Lightburn tutorial and I'm going to put the link right up here. But I have had a few people ask me, can you actually edit a photo or an image in Lightburn the same way you would do it in Photoshop? So I'm going to show you how to use some of those masking tools. We're going to jump straight into it here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just import an image that I found. I'm going to import. Let's see if we can find it. Yep, there's my Space Shuttle Atlantis image. This is a hand rendering done by an artist called Tibby, Tibby K. This is just something that I came across. I like what he's done here. I'm a huge fan of the Space Shuttle program. I don't really want this part of the image, the uh, the reflection or the surface. And unfortunately, that's also means his signature. Not trying to take that away. In fact, I'll even drop a link of where you can find this piece of artwork. But let's see how we can mask out the spatial so we can use that element. And you can do this with people. You can do this with line art. You can do it with anything that you want. Why you would want to mask out elements of an image as opposed to tracing it is simply that if you were to go here, select it, do a trace image, you can see you're losing a lot of the detail. In that traced image, that's a raw trace and you can see that's not gonna work. So let's undo it. I'm just out of curiosity. I wanna see if I can grab as more detail off it. Oh, okay, we can. Let's see what that, but you can see here as well, that's not really gonna be usable. Now I prefer to get my laser to engrave lines as opposed to images, but in some cases you just gotta use the image. So let's jump in here and let me show you how I will mask out the space shuttle element. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and grab the pen tool and I'm actually going to just create a line. And before I move on to anything else, I'm just gonna change that to a tool layer by selecting it first skill. All right, so now we've got it as a tool layer. This allows me to be able to make all my modifications without sending it to the laser, which is one of the things that I love about Lightburn, the fact that they have two of these tool layers right here. So let's just get rid of that line. Let's grab that pencil again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tracing. You can see that line is now the tool layer. And I'm just going to trace this the same way you would do in Photoshop, or you might do it in Illustrator. I'm just going to try and get as close as possible without having to zoom in. And you can take your time. I'm just doing this incredibly quickly. But we do want you guys to understand the theory behind it. Here we are. I am going to zoom in a little bit just so I can get, make sure I've got those curves. Now the good thing is this rendering is on white, so we should be able to I'm going to be cheeky and just cut that last piece out. Come back here, get the engine. I don't know if you guys are fans of the shuttle program or not, but I love. It was actually my original dream was to become a shuttle pilot. I wanted to be the first Australian to fly the space shuttle. 
And you'll see a lot of my influences on these videos are based around space and aeronautics. I had the pleasure of actually living out a dream of mine and going to space camp just before the world shut down. Took a whole bunch of students. And in fact, that's where I first saw this piece of artwork. And I used that to make special keepsakes for the people who were taking us around NASA. And I'll show you some of that in another video. All right, we're going through the wheels. You see, all I'm doing, the faster you want to be, or the tighter you want to be, it's totally up to you. Once I've done this once, I want to keep this artwork so I can reuse it. I'll add it into my art library. But here we go. Just gonna quickly this, this piece here. Come up here. And I'm going to link it there. So now I have a line. Let me just quickly yeah, put it in the center. I now have a selected tool line and I have my image. And all I need to do now is select both of them, control click and apply mask to image. And in that way, I have now cut out my image completely using the mask. I wanna make that permanent because right now you can see I can move this around, right? This is not gonna work for me. But what I can do is I can select both of them again and I can actually flatten them image mask so right now that is now burnt in if i want to increase it make it smaller make it bigger i see here there's a little bit of a bump let's go zoom right in here so i can select reselect this again and fix up that mask if i want to or alternatively i could come back in here select that line select the node tools which is right here and i can grab that and just bring that in a bit just bring it in just a little bit. I might do the same thing for here. I can refine the mask as much as I want. If I want, I can actually add in points. Same thing here. I might slide that down a little bit and just refine it just a little bit. I can keep going back and forth until I'm happy. Let's center it again. I'm happy with that. Let's click off and let's burn flatten that mask image, which is also kind of cooking it in. So now I have an element that I can basically do whatever I want with. I can uh, I can make it as small or as big as possible. And now I've edited out the background and everything else. Now that you've got the image, you can actually modify this within Lightburn itself. So if we go and right click again, there is an adjust image option, but you can see it here. And we can start playing with things like contrast, brightness, gamma, the mode that you want to edit it in. Right now it's in Jarvis. Let's make it grayscale. We can change the contrast by pushing and pulling. So you can see as we're making it darker, you can actually see where we've cut it out the information. So we don't want to do that too much. Let's go bring that back to zero. In the brightness, we can actually let's zoom in a bit. In the brightness, let's see if we can make this a little darker so we can get it on one pass. And again, you can see just in here, you can see where the separation is. So we want to just, let's bring it back to we could push it probably negative one no zero is going to be the the case with that let's see if we can play the, the gamma a bit wow gamma's definitely made it a little darker there so we can actually play with those elements in in such a way that we can bring that up a little bit that's a little too dark for me so i'm just going to push it back a little bit and you can see the original and you can see the result of course, you can also change the DPI, so you can you can change how sharp it's going to be, and you can also make it a negative image if that's something that you want to do. You now have a separate piece of artwork that you can do anything you want with it. You can scale it as big as or as small as you would like. Let us know how you're going to use these tools in your next Lightburn project in the comments below. All right, now you can edit your images in Lightburn in the fastest time possible. Let me know how you go with this technique, as well as any other areas that you might want some help with in the comments below. Now I'm gonna go off and put the finishing touches on a laser side project here. So while I go and do that, feel free to check out some of these other laser tutorials and project videos right here. And let me know if you wanna know what my side project's all about. Till the next Lightburn Hints video goes live, go and make something amazing with your laser and Lightburn. I'll see you soon.